Oh, I just sneeze. <coughs> oh. Works every time. So as a self-professed productivity geek, I like to streamline all areas of my life and job applications are no exception to that rule. I designed a somewhat streamlined process to help me apply for my jobs in the most efficient and productive way possible. And I used this approach to transition from predominantly working full-time as a doctor to now working full-time as a data scientist. And in homage to our Lord and Savior, Tim Ferriss, I've decided to call this the four hour job search. I've made videos in the past where I talk more specifically about different stages of this process. In this video, I just wanted to give more of a high level overview of the overall process, how I kind of streamlined it, um, and some reflections on you know, the benefits I felt that I got from that. So I divided up the process of applying for jobs into four main stages, which are identifying jobs you want to apply for, selecting jobs that match your criteria, skills, and preferences, sending off the application, cover letter and CV, and then preparing for the interview. And I looked at each of these stages in turn, and I asked myself, how could I streamline each process? So firstly, in terms of identifying jobs, I looked at all the websites that listed out jobs that I would potentially be interested in applying for. I decided the search terms and the area that I was looking for. So in my case, that was data scientist or machine learning engineer based in London. And then what I did initially is just copy the links with these search terms in them so that I could just have a list of links. I click on each of those links and I could see all of the most recent jobs. And after a couple of weeks, I decided to actually automate this process a little bit more. So then I wrote some code, which actually would basically do this process manually. It would go to the websites, pull out the jobs, uh, and then list out those in an Excel document. And I made a previous video just explaining how I did that and what I felt you know, some of the benefits of doing that were. And in terms of the second stage of actually picking the jobs, once I'd identified them, I made a list of criteria of things I wanted and also a list of kind of exclusion criteria of things that if the job had that or the job description specified that, then I wouldn't apply for that job. So for me on my priority list, I wanted a job that worked with big data and that data had already been collected and was ready to analyze. I wanted a job that had well-defined projects and I wanted a job that would use a mixture of machine learning and statistical techniques. And then in terms of the exclusion criteria, this was things like if you had a PhD, um, if there was a certain specific amount of years that they specified, or if there were certain technologies that they wanted you to work with that I wasn't familiar with. But that being said, I have actually been advised to take these descriptions sometimes with a pinch of salt because apparently sometimes the recruiters will actually just kind of copy and paste the job descriptions without necessarily tailoring it. So there might be skills there that it says you need or that they want, but actually aren't necessarily using the job. So therefore you might still get the job if you apply for it. So I was a little bit flexible on this, but um, on the whole, I think if it said like PhD and five plus years working with uh, ETL pipelines, then um, I would kind of rule myself out and just decide not to apply for that kind of job. So then what I would do as part of the streamlined process is I would just get those job listings, I would work through each one in turn, and I would just say binary, yes or no, does it meet my criteria? Does it have any of the exclusion criteria? Does it meet all my priority criteria? And then just make that decision of whether or not I'm going to apply. And then for the third step of actually applying for the jobs, once they'd made it through the first couple of stages, there was a couple of things that I found pretty useful. The first was writing my CV in something called Latex. So for those who are not familiar, Latex is basically a coding language that enables you to write your CV um, using this kind of code, it was relatively simple, and then you export that and it shows it as a PDF and then you can send that off. It took me a little bit of time to learn this initially, but what I found to be a real game changer about using Latex is that you can basically comment in or out different parts of your personal statements and that enables you to tailor it depending on your application. And what I mean by commenting in or out is that, let's say you list out like five or six courses and then you're going for an application and you only want to include four of those, you can literally just click on two of them and you click comment out and then they won't appear and it will only export those four. And let's say you then apply for a different job that has different kind of criteria. Um, you look at your six and maybe you're going to pick a different three, you'd comment out, the, comment out the other three and you wouldn't need to actually make any edits to the text itself. So what I found super nice about that is I can have this CV where I put all of the courses I've ever done, all the different experiences, jobs I've had, etc. And then just based on the application I'm doing, I can just pick what, you know, what's the most relevant experience for that. And this was particularly helpful for me because I have a background in healthcare working as a doctor, but then also I'm doing data science projects and I'm applying for a mix of kind of more technical roles and then more product manager, project manager type roles. And obviously between those, different things will have kind of different levels of weighting and different levels of importance. So it just made it super easy for me to be able to kind of comment in and out things um, um, and just adapt my CV very easily. I didn't have to have three or four different separate Word documents with some things that were the same and some things that were different and try and maintain those all separately. Um, and it kind of becomes a bit of a headache that way. There definitely is a bit of upfront time investment to learn how to write in Latex. I personally think it was really worth it because I've used it in other projects as well and it's generally been quite helpful. If you are interested in writing your CV in Latex, I would recommend using the website overleaf.com and there's lots of different templates. So if you just search for Latex CV template, you'll find some really nice templates and you can just pick them, basically use it and then put your information into that. For the cover letter, I basically took the approach of having a generic middle section and then a tailored opening paragraph and a tailored closing paragraph. So what that meant when I was doing my applications is I would take the same cover letter, but I would just tailor the first and the last two 
to whatever job I was applying for and just kind of keep doing those in turn. So the way that this would fit into my process is once every week, I would go and work through all the job listings that I had. I would look at each application and then I would just tailor my CV slightly by commenting things in and out and tailor my cover letter, tailor the introduction and tailor the uh, final kind of concluding section, then just send those off and then go on to the next application and just kind of cycle through those and try and do things as quickly as possible. One other piece of advice that I got, which is not about streamlining the process, um, but it's something that apparently can help boost your application uh, chances. And that is including a tailored introductory sentence or two at the top of your CV. The idea is you kind of summarize your whole application in a sentence or two in a way that kind of sells yourself as much as possible. And you put that at the top of your CV. And the rationale that I was told is, you can't guarantee someone is gonna read your cover letter. You can't guarantee someone is gonna read all of your CV, but you can pretty much guarantee that someone is going to read this two sentences at the top of your CV. But this was a recommendation I followed, and obviously you can't tell for definite whether this did help. Um, I think, you know, it's possible that it did. And the fourth and final step was preparing for the interviews. And I made another video where I went into more detail about how I prepared for interviews. But I made some general documents where I had my skills, competencies, and evidences of these. Um, and I would just update that over time. And then I had a series of documents on more specific things, such as industry specific things, and also for each particular job that I was applying for. And a lot of these I prepared previously. It was just a case of updating those over time. And when interviews did come around, it was nice having these as reference. So I could just refer to them, kind of refresh my memory, test myself a little bit. And it saved a lot of time on preparing for the interviews. And then the other thing I did, which I explained in more detail in this other video I made, and that was to basically take a project-based approach. And what I mean by that is, rather than actually just preparing for the interviews themselves, I devised a series of projects, which I would then just do, and those projects in themselves would be my preparation for the interviews, because I would design them so that they were helpful. And the main motivation for this was to make things a bit more enjoyable and just feel that I was getting more benefit if I didn't then get the job offer that I was still, you know, gaining something from the process. But as I said, I've talked about that in a bit more detail in this other video, so I'll link that in the description below. So on the whole, I think I was able to streamline this process a fair amount and get it pretty efficient. So what it would look like is that every week I would have, you know, one session on each of these different stages. And those wouldn't necessarily be on the same day. I might do, you know, the initial um, getting jobs on a Monday and then stage two on a Tuesday or whatever. But it was nice for a few reasons. I think the first was it reduces this cognitive switching penalty so at any moment you're working on one specific task and there's this idea of cognitive switching penalty which is when you switch from a different type of task uh, and different type of decision making that then your kind of brain slows down because you're having to adapt and you kind of get in your groove um, so taking this approach meant that I was constantly making decisions about whether this is a job I want to apply for or I was constantly updating my cover letter and my CV and sending them off um, or I was preparing for interviews and thinking about interview questions but basically I was just doing those each separately at different periods of time and it was also nice because it gave me some peace of mind. I always felt that I didn't need to be doing anything more because I knew that I was being quite systematic and that I was looking at all the new job postings that could possibly interest me and working through those. But I didn't feel like if during the week, maybe I wasn't hearing back from jobs, that I'd have to need to go look and do any more applications. I could just do that consistently and then focus on spending the rest of my time doing other things that are interesting to me and working on these projects or, or, or whatever. Yeah, and ultimately for me, um, job applications are not the most fun thing. Obviously it is very important and uh, it's very important to get the right kind of job for you. But for me, making the effort to try and be as systematic as possible and trying to be as efficient as possible just made it a lot less stressful and less unenjoyable I think than previous job application cycles have been and I felt like it freed up more time for me to work on other projects and learn skills and generally do things that I think are both enjoyable and good for my long-term future so that was the overall approach that I took to streamline my job applications if you're applying for jobs then best of luck um, and if you decide to streamline it then hopefully that helps and makes things a bit more productive and less stressful and I plan to make more videos in the future with suggestions and reflections on making career transitions so if you'd be interested in seeing those then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below. I'll see you in the next video.